before we discuss the last example of chapter four, I'd like to summarize what we have been discussing in this chapter. Chapter four deals with uh, two types of uh, open systems. One is uh, uh, fluid passing a control volume in the steady state. And uh, the second type is transient state, uh, or we can call unsteady state. The governing equation for both types of uh, problems are summarized in this handout I provided to you earlier, and uh, it's, they are available inside the blackboard. Uh, for steady state, for unsteady state. Uh, this is the, the left hand side represent the control volumes, total energy difference between the two states. And on the right, it represents the total energy carried by the incoming stream minus the total energy carry out by the exiting stream plus the energy provided into the system minus the shift work done by the control volume. Then uh, we should be able to look at the very last ex example of chapter four. Uh, in this example, we have uh, ammonia inside a rigid container. The container is uh, well insulated, so there's no heat transfer. And the ammonia is at the two state. Each um, phase of the ammonia occupy half of the volume. The total volume is given to cubic meters and that the temperature of the two-phase flow is also given 40 degrees C and when we open the valve the vapor start to leave the control volume and uh, then uh, the temperature of the two-phase ammonia will drop. We are asked to solve how much ammonia will leave the system before the temperature reach 10 degrees. So in the first step, we have to answer the question, why the temperature of ammonia will drop? The answer is the flow work the fluid inside the control volume will do the flow work to the exceeding stream to push the vapor out so that uh, the total energy of the fluid inside the container will drop, then the temperature will drop. In order to answer the question, how much mass will leave the system before the temperature reach 10 degrees C. We start the analysis by using the material balance and the energy balance. As you can tell, the energy balance equation reduces to mass at the time two minus mass at the time one equal to the time the, the mass exceeding the container. Energy equation reduced to this form. It, on the left, it represents the internal energy at the state two minus the total internal energy at the initial state. On the right, because there's no incoming stream, the first term drops to zero. There's 
uh, no work done, no heat transfer. So there's only one term left um, in this uh, on, on the left-hand side of the energy equation. If we substitute uh, M sub E from the material balance equation into this equation, then we get four terms altogether. Combine the initial state property uh, on one side, collect the terms associated with the ending state on the other side, we get this expression. Now let's look at how we're gonna solve the problem. The initial state is fully given. It's um, uh, internal energy is given. Total mass can be calculated because the volume are known. Um, specific volume can be found from the table. <clears throat> then we said they are seem to have three unknowns. The mass two, internal energy at the state two, and uh, enthalpy of the exceeding strength. They seem to be all unknown. However, <clears throat> if we look closely, we realize all these three quantities can be linked to one fluid property. That is the quality of the ending state. <clears throat> if we look at the process of the PV diagram, the initial state has to be inside the face envelope toward the liquid side because the quality of the ammonia at the initial state is uh, going to be a very low number. We have tackled similar problem before. If the vapor to liquid ratio is one to one, volume ratio is one to one, then the quality has to be very low number. And they assuming the ending state is also two-phase fluid. Uh, imagine when we release the fluid, uh, we release the vapor out of the container, the fluid inside the container will remain as a two-phase flu for a while before, you did, before the top liquid become vapor completely. So assuming X2 is a number between zero and one, we will be able to express U2 as a function of X2 we shall be able to express M2 as a function of X2. The reason is this. M2 can be expressed as a ratio of total volume divided by specific volume of the ammonia at the ending state. Then if the ending uh, specific volume can be found, then M2 can be found, can be at least express a function of X2. Now, one interesting thing is uh, if uh, the ending state temperature is known, and if it's two phase flu, the ending state's pressure is going to be the saturation pressure at this temperature. This number can be found from the ammonia table. So um, from all this information, we shall be able to calculate all these three numbers. 
and let's see how we solve the problem. Like I mentioned earlier, we can calculate the mass at the state one in two different phases. Then we can take the of take the sum to get the total ammonia inside the container uh, like like this. Then we can calculate total internal energy at the initial state. Now, assuming uh, the ending state, temperature and the pressure are both known, um, we can express V2 and the U2 as a function of X2, like this. Moreover, M2 can be expressed as a ratio of total volume divided by Swiss volume. Total volume for a rich container won't change. It's the same as the initial total volume. Therefore, we can substitute these three expressions uh, into the equation we have been talking about. The only remaining quantity in that expression, we have to take some actions is uh, H sub E. Imagine the total enthalpy leaving the container is a quantity which is, uh, which vary during the process. So it doesn't stay as a constant value. However, because the initial state and the ending state total and so can be found, we can take the average value. So um, this is how we treated H sub E. We get a number. Then we put the, all the information on the right hand side, on the left hand side, I'm sorry, of the equation, we get this expression. The only unknown in this equation is X2. This is what we solved from the left hand side, a uh, right hand side. We put this number on the right hand side. This is the, what happened to the left hand side. The only unknown is X2. Once we solve X2, we can solve V2. Uh, from V2, we found M2. From M2, we found the total mass leaving the system. This concludes the discussion of chapter two.